Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of the Saturday Morning Gaming Show. It is April 17th, 2020, and I am your co-host, The Fat Wizard, joined today by... Alamaxia. And Lobos. And today we're playing Echo the Dolphin for the Sega Genesis, and this was released in 1992. Uh, and a couple of first thoughts I had on this is... Um, I kind of feel like this is uh, the Citizen Kane of video games, and let me let me uh, explain why. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I watched Citizen Kane uh, a couple years back because it's one of those where it's like everyone needs to see Citizen Kane, um, and when you watch it, it's not a great movie, but you have a, a much better appreciation for the media at the time. And so I felt that the same way about Echo, and I wanted to get your guys' thoughts because I felt this was something that really helped me understand the Sega library a bit more, but I didn't feel like it was a, a, a super great game. What did you guys think? Overall, I thought the game, uh, it suffered from the controls a lot. It was really difficult to control Echo and try to get him to go exactly where you wanted him to go. And the difficulty was... It was there at the beginning. The middle game was kind of quick. The, the middle game just went by really quick. And then at the very end, it just got insane hard. But <laughs> yeah. I, Lobos, I, you I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it. You know, it's, it started off and it almost had, I felt like kind of an, like an educational feel to it. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, I'm saving pods of dolphins and swimming around and eating fish and and I can use my sonar, and it's super cool. And then, like, the midpoint, it's like, now all this crazy stuff happens, and you're like, oh, okay, and then the, you just you just have to, you know, throw and, all inhibitions out. Yeah. Just be like, okay, whatever you want to do, just do it. Just do it, man. All logic cool. goes out the window. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what you do in this game. So you start out in the game, and you're in the very first level, which is called Home Bay. And it's a very cool, you know, kind of low-key level you're just kind of swimming around there's other dolphins and you can use your sonar and you use the sonar to talk so it's like if you hit another dolphin with your sonar a little dialogue screen will come up and say hey echo how you doing and one of the dolphins says uh, how high can you fly did you guys find that mm -hmm. yeah and so that's a key that you should jump up in the air as high as you can and when you do this huge vortex like sucks everything out of the sea but leaves you for some reason. And so much of the game is really focused around so once you get that get that little story bit, a lot of the game is focused around just trying to figure out how to get out of the level. And often it would be there's a gate that is is sort of sealed by this crystal and the crystal you can eventually move out of the way if you go find another crystal, which unlocks it. So a lot of the game is really just kind of navigating these maze-like areas and finding these gate crystals to unlock these other gates, will, which will allow you to progress. And honestly, that's majority of the like 26 levels here. And um, so you, you kind of get into a rhythm once you get the hang of the game. You're like, okay, I see how to play this. But for me, when I started... It was a little bit of a challenge to be like, what What exactly is this game, right? Because it's not really like any yeah. other game I had played. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the first yeah. four levels of it really felt like, um, like the, the four or five levels entirely felt like the tutorial of the game because each one just kind of introduced a little bit of a different mechanic that you needed in order to carry forward into like the middle and end game of it. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah, and the whole thing with the crystals was like a... I guess you can call it a puzzle, but it's like because there's no difference between the crystals. There's like the 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 crystal that is a basically a door, and the crystal that is basically a key look exactly the same. And mm -hmm. later on in the game, there's like multiple crystals, so you're like, okay, I got to figure out which crystal this one's for, and this and that. Though they do have it uh, most of the time linearly set up, and but, it's also usually pretty obvious to figure out which one is the gatekeeper because or which one is blocking the door. Or the exit, yeah, because yeah. it's like, oh, here's a big crystal in between a passageway. Yeah, right? exactly. So we just kind of hit our first, what I would consider first level of the game, which is called the Under Caves. And this is, um, it, it really teaches you immediately uh, how these crystals work. Because immediately you go in, it's a very narrow corridor 
once you enter a level, you can't back out. So there are linear levels. It's not like an open world game, like I, which I originally thought it was going to be. But you uh, immediately to your right, you find one of the the crystals that you can hit with your sonar. Oh no, actually, you have to bop it with your nose. Yeah. Uh, Echo is a uh, bottle nose dolphin, I believe, is the what what uh, classification he is. Sort of like the flipper of um of dolphins here. And uh, so you you bob it with your nose, and a little like concentric ring uh, appears on you, and that's the indication that hey, you now have access to use your sonar to knock out this other key. And so you do that, boom, you've kind of solved the first puzzle. So I will say, in terms of like a tutorialization, they do a pretty good job of teaching you the base mechanics early on. Yeah, and Echo has some base stats, which is basically just health and then breath and. You do need to keep finding spots where you can pop up and refill your oxygen. And uh, they teach you that pretty quickly. Also, if, well, I guess you don't necessarily figure that out. You could think something invisible is killing you. But there's a lot of sections that's just like, uh, oh, you're kind of trapped. And if you don't get oxygen soon enough, you die really quickly. So, Yeah, in many ways, that reminded me of the old Sonic uh, water levels, you know, where you... Uh you're underwater and sure. trying to get the the breath and you, that song that comes on it's like dun 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 dun, yeah. dun 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 and it's it's sort of the same thing where you can visibly see your air meter going down and once your air meter is completely out it starts removing your health mm-hmm. and then once and once your health goes away then you actually restart the entire level and for Alamaxi I think you made a good point about this seemed like it was a was Alamaxi said it seemed like an educational thing mm, I said that Oh, that was you, Lobos. Okay. Yeah, and um, it surprised me actually how hard this game was because (laughs) it was like if you die on a level or you, yeah, I guess if you die, you have to restart the entire level and and some of the things you are doing in the level are quite demanding. Yeah. To the point where I heavily use save states and I encourage that uh in the discord because i'm like yeah some of these levels are going to be kind of a nightmare to to redo over and over and over yeah i would agree it 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 became clear like that kind levels would typically be broken up kind of into sections and each one maybe had like one hard thing you had to do and then once you did it then you can move on to the next section and then you would fail at that and go back to the beginning and then i was like okay yeah so i'm gonna save state after i do the hard thing and then the next hard thing (laughs) etc But I feel like for some of the levels, that hard thing was just simply figuring out where you needed to go. Yeah. And and for those levels, if you died and went back to the beginning, that didn't re- it wasn't really that bad on a second time through. I do remember one level mm-hmm. um, mid-game where we have to make a, a very high, high jump at the very yes. beginning that uh, is <laughs> extremely frustrating to, we'll to even get one time. We'll have plenty of time to talk about that. So yeah. let's, not, let's not get into there yet because there's a, a whole <laughs> section on the video yeah. that goes there. So uh, talking about a little bit more about what we're doing, actually, th- we originally said that the majority of the levels have you finding those crystals and opening gateways, but actually the level we're on right now, which I believe is, is either the vents or the lagoon, has you rescuing three other dolphins. And this level probably took me the longest because there's a lot of really narrow corridors that you have to go down. And it's very hard to figure out where you are and where you need to be. You do have a little sonar ability, which uh, if you hold down the sonar button, the sonar actually comes back and like hits you in the face and will show you a very small map of the area, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, I did too. You're kind of mapping out the area around you. Did you guys feel like the map was sufficient though to really get your bearings? Because I I found that it was like, well, I can kind of see everything around here anyway. Yeah, um, I would I would use it to detect like cuz I think they would show like certain pickups or like maybe a crystal. So if I was on, at a wall or and I could see that there was another side but not entirely what was there, like it would extend your vision uh, a bit more and then you could kind of see what's around there, but I didn't use it all that much just in in very specific cases. I tried to avoid using it for the most part, um not because I didn't want to know where to go because that was very helpful, but Anytime I used it, any enemies around me would immediately respawn. And Oh, is that true? I, huh. I guess I didn't notice that. Yeah, there were times where I would uh, have just defeated like a, a shark or one of those puffer fish that we saw earlier. I would use my map, and coming out of the map, they would be immediately respawned right on top of me. 
So I, I had to wait until I was in, in more of a safe that's, spot to use brutal. that. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so we're still trying to collect all the, uh, all the dolphins here. And of course, some of the things you have to do on these early levels are really, really precise and demanding. We're looking at a scenario right now where there's this little brick you have to destroy. And the only way to destroy this is to use your sonar beam to push forward, or your sonar, I don't know, I guess sonar attack, whatever you want to call it, uh, to push a... I'm not sure what this actually is. It looks like a ring of spikes, though. Yeah, it's right? like urchins or something, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you have to you have to you have to use your sonar to push it along, and you have to like go up and then left and then up and then right, and it it's kind of imprecise to the part or to the point where often I would shoot those urchins into, uh, you know, the geometry and be like, oh no, I can't get it now. So you have to go back and you have to redo the whole thing. And that, it was just very, very time consuming. And that was a good example of when I would use save states. I'm like, all right, cool. I pushed the urchins, you know, a good deal to closer to where they needed to be save here because if, I'm, if I mess up, then I can kind of restore there right away and not have to redo that whole stuff. But along yeah, the way, and, you and, even had the obstacle of an octopus that yes. that they, they give you a hint in, in the earlier level, swim by him slowly, and you don't realize how slowly you really have to go. <laughs> you do. Really yeah. slowly, or else, or else he'll hit you with his uh, his his tentacle, and uh, he actually slightly prevents you from progressing, and also will damage you. So, uh, yeah, and and that's really nerve wracking, especially when you're considering I'm almost out of breath. I need to get past yeah. this guy really quickly, but you got to play it cool because he'll knock you if you uh, if you don't go too slow. Yeah. Good points. Uh, some other obstacles we're dealing with here are there's some shells that are spiked and you have to, it took me actually quite a while to figure out uh, how to progress past uh, one of the areas because there's an area early on, I think it was in the, the second level, uh, the under caves mm -hmm. where there's a, a bunch of shells that are blocking a uh, path and i i spent forever trying to figure out like how do i get past these do i use my sonar things uh no you actually have a dash button and so the dash button does a couple things one it'll damage slash destroy enemies it will also damage slash destroy like those shells we talked about and the third thing that it really does is it will allow you to eat these little tiny fish if you come into contact with them and those are how you actually heal up for the most part yeah, that level you're talking about with the spikes that you have to destroy the first time. There's also another passage above that has like this water current that like won't let you swim past it. But I, I managed to do that like two or three times. So I thought that's just how you were supposed to, to do that part. Oh, so, so you, did, you managed to get down past the, the current? Yeah, the, I don't know why. Glitch maybe? Okay. I don't know. But I did that. And then at some point I just couldn't do it anymore. And I was like... <laughs> what happened and <laughs> it took me forever i actually had to look up and then they were like oh yeah just break these with your snout and i was like oh my gosh okay i think okay. i ended up just hitting the button out of frustration and bopped one with my <laughs> nose and went oh that's how you do it <laughs> we're still early enough in this early enough in this video that i haven't realized that you actually swim faster by mashing on the a button i thought yeah. you, i thought you just hold down the a button to swim fast and so those uh, those rapids that you're talking about, I haven't figured out how to actually get past those. Later on, I figure out like, oh, you actually have to mash on the A button quite quickly, and then you you kind of go a lot quicker. Yeah, and, uh, so and I feel like also whenever you're hitting the A button, it gives you a little bit more maneuverability with Echo. Like he was a little bit more responsive to your controls. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now we are on uh, Ridgewater, and I think this is the first level. It might they might have introduced this enemy a little bit before, um, but it's the crab enemy, oh, and yeah. the crab enemy will just hang out on walls, usually in a place that you can't actually get to, like they're in the geometry, and they'll come at you and just damage you. And, and they were really annoying to have to deal with. And as we see, we're trying to navigate down uh, down these very narrow corridors. There's there's kind of a maze like of corridors, and they're just all over the place. And it's like, oh come on, <laughs> crabs, please stop trying to eat uh, Echo for for dinner here. Yeah, and when you try to attack something, it's kind of annoying because you press the charge button, and then Echo has to like pull back a bit, and then he charges forward, 
And so if something's coming at you and you hit it just not early enough, then yeah. Echo will take so much time that the thing will, you'll charge past it and not hit it and still take damage from it. And it can be it can be kind of frustrating if you're trying to kill things. Yeah, often though, if there was a uh, straightaway, I would just keep smashing on the the dash button, mm -hmm. and 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 more often than not, I would dash into an enemy and then immediately dash into another enemy, and so yeah. you can kind of just like I'm just gonna mash on the button and get through this this place safely. Yeah, one thing that was kind of annoying. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say even if you don't kill the enemy on the first hit, they. It, make some uh, flash like transparent for a little bit. You know that you can pass through them yeah. safely. Yeah, I was going to say one thing that I found kind of annoying with the dash is when you are just trying to dash past enemies, you don't necessarily want to hit them. The dash has an auto aim feature that forces <laughs> bit, echo yeah. to, to go out of line with where you really want to go. Mm -hmm. So in, in this corridor where we're swimming between all, all these stingrays, if I just want to go through it really fast, I have to mash that A button. I can't dash. Otherwise, I hit them. <laughs> I, I will say, though, uh, I, maybe it was my excitement for, for getting the health, but I always felt like trying to dash into the small little fish to eat them to, to regain health, I would actually miss them so often. Yeah, they, they move away like, from you. i circle around so. them. Yeah. I, I had a better time like figuring out where they were and then moving off screen and then charging at them from off screen because yeah. I would get too close and they'd move a lot of the way. And, yeah. Now, did you guys find how the uh, little uh, clams that you could use your Echo on mm -hmm. and they would release the bubbles to heal you instead? So you, you yeah, had two ways to heal yourself there. I think some of them would shoot out fire bubbles though, right? And yeah, they the red, red bubbles. bubbles. Yeah. The red bubbles. So I kind of just not, I didn't try, to, I didn't really use them that much because I'm like, I don't know if it's a red bubble or blue bubble, but eh, eh, it's it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I think the first level where you rescue dolphins, um, and maybe the first or the second, I rescued like two out of three and then I found the exit and I was like, okay. Uh, and then I was like, wait a minute. And I looked up just in case. And if you rescue all three, then you get an ability that upgrades your sonar. And I was like, oh, so I don't know if they offer a way to get it later, but potentially if you don't do that, then you miss out on stuff like for the rest of the game. I don't know. I think the sonar that you get is what's called the confuse sonar, and that allows you to uh, use your sonar on the sharks or the hungry ones, and it basically makes them spin in place for a quick second for you to, mm -hmm. to swim by them. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm not, I don't I'm think not it locks sure, you out of any there's, content. There's also there's also something called a damage sonar, um, and and I didn't know how to do this. I think I rescued all three dolphins, but didn't figure out how to use this ability because apparently you're supposed to first dash, but right as you're about to attack, you hit the the sonar button, and then it will damage enemies. Yeah, so yes, weird. there is a confused sonar as well, but there's also a damage one. So having a damage sonar <laughs> sonar would have been really great. Especially yeah, I, for I this never level. used that which is open ocean, which this one's interesting because this is just a, a straight shot. There's just a bunch of sharks and you have to just go from the left to the right and there's tons of sharks. And to the point where I was wondering, like, is there something I'm supposed to be doing? Because I feel like I've been yeah. going to the right here for a long time. Yeah, that was the level that kind of was a dead giveaway of, okay, some of these levels are literally just going to be, I guess, traveling levels. It's not going to be quite yeah. a, a, a maze. You just got to get through the level uh not really much to figure out exactly yeah. i will say that the next level we are in ice zone is really when i think i started to warm up to this game a little bit oddly enough in the ice zone uh, hmm. because because i think this game if it was 26 levels all in like a blue ocean i just needed something visually different to look at sure. and uh, so about like six or seven levels in they give you a instead of a tropical um, you tropical ocean. Now you have a frozen Arctic. I'm like, okay, you know, some a new palette to look at. We have some new enemies, like these these huge spider things yeah. that, that hang out there. <laughs> spider crabs, yeah, I mean they're spider, terrifying. Don't they are spider crabs? <laughs> and I, I, think I do so. want to talk about real quick about why we're in the Arctic because if you're going yeah. through the levels and you uh, there's there's this NPC that you'll find in the early levels. He's uh, he's the killer whale, and you talk to I him think they and call he call him a big blue, right? Well, no, this he's is the not orca, big blue. The, the, the yeah. orca, he's oh, like he's yeah. the one that says big blue is to the north, and right. then another one's like he's really far to the north. So we've traveled so far north that everything is ice. We have 
frozen water all around us and we're trying to find whoever Big Blue is because Echo doesn't know what happened to his pod and he's just going around effectively asking everyone he can, hey, do you know where my family is? <laughs> yeah. He's a poor little kid in the, the supermarket trying to find his parents. <laughs> yeah. They do also mention that Echo has, I believe it's five stars on his forehead, which makes him look a little unique compared to the other uh, Oh yeah, the other dolphins. Now here we're seeing a, a sequence where I thought there was a lot of fun. Uh, often what you do in Echo is you have a little, we'll call it like a pond, so a very localized area you can swim in, but then you can jump out of the water over some terrain and into another little pond. And this is kind of cool because with it being icy, you actually kind of like belly slide on the the ice there. And I I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I like doing that a lot. And especially after I figured out you could jump while sliding and jump Mm -hmm. over like the next gap so you don't go down into the water there. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just uh, finished up ice zone. Now we're in a level called hard water. And hard water introduces some blocks of ice that actually <laughs> move around and if those blocks of ice uh, you know kind of catch you on terrain you know, like squish you it'll instant kill you and as we see right now there is one section in this level where there's just ice that's going all there's probably like eight ice blocks and they're all just going like chaotic uh, movements and i definitely got caught a couple times in between <laughs> blocks did you guys have any trouble with those i definitely got killed quite a few times <laughs> I I got I like, killed a few, but I found there was the uh, there was an outside area on the uh, if you went the uh, left wall and up and around, you could swim pretty quickly and avoid almost all of it. Mm, okay, <laughs> interesting. I did like these levels a lot because up until now, it's been a lot of just find the find the uh, crystal and unlock the things and and dodge the enemies, which are kind of random. I always felt that the enemies, although they do have a set attack pattern. They, they were kind of just random, right? But these had patterns you could observe and be like, okay, now hold here and then burst <laughs> through here, j- dash through here. So I felt like I was getting a little more of like the the um, Twitch-based um, strategy there, you know, like trying to time my dashes. And I, I did like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Now uh, we are just about done with this level because we, we have to, at the end of the level is that those like, a bunch of ice blocks that uh, are all moving together. And once you get the keystone, you're able to finally get back through there and go on to the next level, which is called cold water. Of course, we're actually coming up pretty quickly on uh, finding Big Blue. I believe he's in this level. Um, I guess we'll find out fairly quickly, though. Uh, And this is one that, Lobos, you were talking about where you will need to jump over spikes. So you'll be like... um, on your mm. belly sliding across the ice and there's also spikes that are on the ground so you have to like kind of slide jump slide jump to hit the the um the open patches of water that you need to go into yeah yeah i think if you hit them it knocks you the other way so you have to <laughs> yeah, yeah, otherwise and, your and progress I is I, wrecked i definitely ping-ponged a couple times in between two spikes <laughs> uh and, and those those do actually damage you so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, this and- this level had one of the more frustrating parts, which was what you were just doing, which is this just this this column of water with an opening at the top, but there's this current that's pushing down, and what you have to do is just get up there and then jump to the left or the right, and but getting him to I I don't know if you guys found a better way to do it, but I would just get up there constantly, and as he'd reach the top, I would get a jump off, but it would just go straight up, and I couldn't, yeah, yeah. you can't move I, and, yeah, in midair. Yeah, it was air. very, it's very hard, because you, you basically have to angle your jump, as far as I could tell, you have to angle your jump before you actually breach the water, but of course, because this was so narrow, if you angle too quickly, you're just going to hit a wall. Yeah. So yeah, definitely spent some time trying to get up there. All right, cool. Now, we actually did find Big Blue. Here's this huge... You guys said he was an orca whale? Is that no, right? this is this a blue whale. blue whale. Oh, blue whale. Yeah, he's absolutely huge. He's probably, yeah, I'd say 20 times the size of Echo, maybe. And I uh, actually couldn't figure out how to talk to him because I'm just like shooting my <laughs> sonar all over. But you have to shoot the sonar in his eye. <laughs> 
I that's how blue whales talk man uh, <laughs> did you guys figure oh but uh he he is breathing out and i was like oh can i breathe the air he's breathing out but i don't think you can i i did tried you breathing out how to talk to this guy no, that's interesting like you shot it at his eye here but yeah, i guess yeah. it just barely missed but oh there you <laughs> go i didn't really have any problems yeah, and so uh, he basically says, hey, you're brave to come see me. Sorry about your pod. I'm going to help you. Uh, what else does he say here? Oh, yeah, he says that we know there's uh, these violent storms that occur every 500 years. Uh, and then when they happen, all traces of life vanish. Um, but he doesn't know why that occurs. And he's like, hey, don't give up. There is one older and wiser than I. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, really? Great. Um, yeah. And it's called the Asteroid. Yeah. And uh, he calls it the oldest life form of the sea. He doesn't really say what it looks like, though. Mm-hmm. So uh, and it's kind of a surprising thing when you actually get to it. You're like, oh, that's the asteroid. That's kind of weird. Um, and it says, hey, if you can talk to it, then maybe it'll be able to help you. And it says, uh, and Big Blue says, hey, it's going to be inside of the deep water zone, I believe, mm-hmm. which is actually the, the next level. So we have a mission. We have our mm-hmm. next mission, which is get to uh the deep water yeah and i feel like at this point like the the thing of a storm every 500 years it carries off a bunch of animals is weird and suspect but everything's still kind of normal up to this point okay now let me ask you an eyes honest question how many thought that there was going to be aliens involved the minute that they saw that little vortex thing because i was like it's aliens you know that's got to be aliens there's nothing else that it could be it's got to be aliens (laughs) The sound effects See? board definitely uh, led me to think alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's one of, that's one of the reasons I was really interested in Echo is I wanted to see if this goes in a place where it's like, okay, you start out in the ocean, but then it goes crazy and you're starting to explore like outer space and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't go quite that far, but we get. I think we get some cool rewards a little bit later on. Often we'll go to some levels that we've already been to, and I think this might be one of those. I think there's a couple times you go back to levels where you've already been, and you you either have to find a new exit out or you basically have to find the same exit out. I can't remember which which one it is, uh, but you guys notice that as well. That's often it's like, all right, go back to this level that you were literally just at. Yeah, some of them, most of them had a purpose. Like uh, like there's definitely oh. I won't spoil it, but coming up, there's a place here you go, and you gotta. It helps you travel, so um, yeah. that you have to return to and do that a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yeah. you go back to yeah, one of the first areas to talk to a dolphin or something, and mm, you go back to the very first level. I remember that, but yeah. Uh, let, while we're kind of like you know roaming around here, I want to talk about the music. I actually feel like we always forget to talk about the music, but this game, I love the music. And I'll tell you what, I probably listened to the soundtrack about five or six times while playing this game. I don't know. Did, did the music kind of hit home for you guys? Was it was it nothing special or was it like, oh, this is great stuff? I really like this music. Um, it's more ambient than what I'm familiar with, which is Echo 2, The Tides of Time, Ooh, which okay. has a banging soundtrack. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's, I still really liked it. I liked the, um, I, I would say the sound design, although the constant charging and sonar could get on could get become grating on the ears but overall i really liked it the music was nice um after spending about four hours in the first few levels though the music in those got a little a little on my nerves and i i fumbled my way into figuring out how to turn off the music you can actually toggle it on and off Uh, if you uh if you pause the game and you hit your a and b button at the same time toggle it Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. They knew that. Yeah. They were like, okay, people are going to be stuck here, so let's let's give them a break. You know, I think I found that also, and I was like, who wants to turn off the music? I'll leave that on. <laughs> I definitely had it on for a vast majority of the game, but levels that I went through a few too many times, I was like, I, I don't want to listen to this music again. They definitely <laughs> have themes, you know, like you'll... you'll hear and identify certain types of music with like all right i'm out in the the kind of the ocean here what's more spread out or the under caves where there's a bunch of chasm narrow chasms they definitely had distinguishing music which i appreciated and to the point where uh when i was listening to the the ost on youtube 
I was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm out in the ocean just kind of swimming along the fishes or the fish. And this is really great. So maybe I was the only one that really appreciated this music, but uh, it, it's good. If, if people haven't listened to it, they might want to give it a listen because uh, I thought it was very relaxing. Yeah. Now we are on the, we're, we're on deep water and this is roughly halfway through the game, I'd say. And we just found Asterix. Or is that his name? The Asterite. Asterite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so really this looks like a DNA sequence. Um, but they're like little balls that are orbiting. As opposed to like, you imagine a DNA thing being like these ladder type things that are circling. These are just like little bar- balls that are circling in a, in a, in a pattern there. Um, so what he says is basically, like, hey, I can, I can help you if you help me. Uh, and you must go uh, travel into the past to help him regain his full strength. And I'm like, yes, that's what I'm looking for <laughs> in this game. And he says, go to uh, the West, and there's a sunken city called Atlantis. And uh, I was like, all right, cool. I hope that Atlantis is really, really crazy. Um, and of, essentially, you get there, and... Uh, well, actually, before you get there, you have to find a time travel machine. I was like, oh, okay, this is really cool because I was, I was, again, I was hoping for that sci-fi flair on this. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get to the uh, teleporter machine in just a bit here. But were you guys excited about the idea of going to Atlantis? That was pretty sweet. And uh, whenever he was like, and you're going to travel time, I was like, and this game just got weird. <laughs> yeah, that that this is the point where it starts. It, it's still not like I don't know. It's like okay, time travel. All right, fine. But then he, it gets even more weird later. Also, he just asks you to go find one of his globes, and you're like, oh, okay. I guess I guess I'll do that. That'll help you find my family. Sure. Yeah, uh, so, and that that's yeah. actually a, uh, that is a critical hint for later on mm-hmm, finding one of the mm-hmm. globes, but we'll talk about more about that boss fight because I definitely had some issues with it. <laughs> so uh, the next area we go to is called the Marble Sea. And so now we're getting into what almost looks like a city that's underwater. And uh, immediately you find these gold chains and, um, you know, y- you can you can bop the gold chains with your nose to break them. Uh, did you guys figure that out right away? Yeah, I think one of the earlier levels had chains that you could bop, but then there were other chains that you couldn't bop. Um, that yeah. I think you needed like, or maybe it was this level actually. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's yeah. gray chains which you need a little box that has it looks like chains on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no, not chains. They, they I don't know what they look like. They look like C's, like the letter C. Yeah, like characters. Anyway, you yeah. you you push the um, that block into the gray chains, and that breaks the gray chains. Um, I didn't make that association immediately that gold chains, you can use your nose and gray. You have to use the, uh, the, the block. So there's a, a part a little bit later that I get stuck, hmm. a little bit confused, but I got to say the level here is refreshing. And, uh, just again, the palette change is a much needed, um, departure from the other stuff that we were playing before it just really i think breathes life into what essentially is an exploration game having a unique tile set i think is paramount to keeping my interest at least and i love the level design in these in this area because of just not only say the tile set but the different challenges that they introduce like they have some switches that you have to um you have to sing to a crystal and it says access granted and then oh yeah I guess that opened up something yeah. somewhere and you have to go find it. Yeah. So it no, it added that sense a... of urgency to the exploration. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Here on a part that I was thoroughly confused because you, you find this little statue that looks like, um, I don't know, it's like an Apollo or Poseidon statue in stone. And if you hit it, you get this little um, circle, like blue star thing that's, that orbits you. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of looks like we were talking about those urchins before. I was like, okay, so what I need to do is I have to hit this thing to get the, uh, the little stars to circle me. And then I have to race all the way across the other <laughs> side of this level and use that to, like, kill the gray uh, chains, right? And so 
every single time I did it, I was like a fraction of a second just away from from hitting <laughs> it because the, uh, eventually the uh, the little things orbiting you will go away. Yep. And um, ultimately, what what I figured out is the only purpose of that the, those little blue stars that orbit you are um, they kind of give you invulnerability, and anything that you touch will will die. Uh, like enemies, but also more importantly is when it expires, it actually gives you all your health and oxygen back. So it's like, that is your, that is your, your saving, uh, your saving grace there. It's just like, if you got that, you're good to go for the next couple minutes. You know, you don't have to worry about air. You don't have to worry about life. Yeah. And you can reuse them. So if you remember where they are and are willing to backtrack, you can just make things a lot easier on yourself. Yeah. But ultimately what I found was, that the the thing that opened up that gray chain was actually a little access stone like Alamax he was talking about earlier. You have to go slightly below that where that gray chain was. And um, yeah, you, you can open up the chain through um, the access stone. After doing all that, you complete that level and you go on to the library. And the library is a, a cool little uh, change of pace because you start out the level and there's a bunch of these crystals that you can you can um, uh, you use your sonar on and they fill you in with a little bit of the details. Um, and I have the details up right now. Let me try to summarize it uh, for everyone. Uh, so uh, there's about like six different crystals and they start saying, uh, hey, we're losing uh, a war with the planet Vortex. And I think that's the first time you hear about a planet named Vortex. Yeah. It says Atlantis is in ruins after a beam struck from space. We have escaped into the past with our technology. And so now I'm like, all right, these games doubling down on that sci-fi yeah. stuff. That's awesome. Um, and then there's another one that says, says crystals are contain or crystals contain encoded messages, and then certain sounds reflect the message back. So that makes sense why using your sonar will often allow you to like, you know, get a message from them. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, another one was talking about the vortex. They suspect the vortex are dying and could no longer produce food. So over 500 years, when the earth and vortex have a clear path, the vortex feed on the earth. <laughs> and it says it actually increases in size. And so I was like, oh man, this is really cool that um, they have this uh, this explanation for why these the vortex are, are consuming, uh, you know, basically echoes family <laughs> yeah and they keep eating more and more every time yeah. so it's just more and more sea life gone or mm-hmm. more potentially more than sea life yeah um after that a little bit we get to a part <laughs> this was a nightmare for me because there's another one of these places there's about five gray chains and so at this point we know that the gray chains can be destroyed by using those little blocks you know but there is a block but it is about um there's there's like these little wells. So there's about four or five wells in between where the block is and where the gray chains are. And what you have to do is you have to push the block into one of the wells and then it'll hit the bottom. And then you have to go to the bottom and like nose the block up the well and then off to the side a little bit. And you have to do it like five times. And the controls aren't super precise. It's not really easy to like get to the bottom of a block and um you know lift it above you did you guys have issues with that at all yeah i totally did yeah that, that took me a while and then i eventually like looked it up because i tried to, to lift it as much as i could and i was like it doesn't seem this like i can do this yeah. and i can't charge it across the gaps <laughs> yeah and even if i could it would slide into the next pit yeah. um you're like so, am i doing the right thing but the thing i was using uh, you probably were using as well it gave a good tip where you like you hold down down you scoop once and then you scoop a second time after you've scooped and then it would hold it and that worked fine but yeah so what what i did yeah so i'd i'd go to the very bottom and i'd nose it up a little bit and then immediately go to the bottom again and then you kind of have a good grasp on your nose yeah the way i found to do it was i had to push it all the way to the left then push it all the way to the right and then if i went uh down under it and pushed it up it would stay on my nose but if I didn't oh. do that, I could not keep that thing on my nose to save my life. I had I I probably went through about thirty or forty attempts on that area just to Ooh. get it just to get it through. That was that was the most brutal part of the game for me. Oh no. Yeah. Jeez. There are definitely some sections in this game, that being one of them, 
where I, I, I looked at a guide. I'm like, I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing here because yeah. this seems a little more difficult than it should be. And there's one part, we haven't got to it yet, so I don't want to spoil it yet. It, Lois, you kind of already talked about it, but um, th- where I looked up a guy, I'm like, all right, let's make sure that this is what I'm supposed to be doing here. So let's see. We are all on the city of forever now, which is, again, the last city in Atlantis. And I thought I had this section with the teleporter on this, but I guess not. But I do have the section on the teleporter neck or later on. So we'll talk about that teleporter when we get to it on the second part. Uh, yeah. and this city for forever has a uh, we've we've seen this a couple times where there is a there's like a draft that's that's pulling you upwards and you want to go down. And occasionally there'll be a, a little block and you can push that block to block the current. And then as as long as the block is like going downwards, you can swim behind the block and it will make it so the draft doesn't affect you. And I, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, it was cool. Although the blocks, when they first introduced that were, I could not see them at all. So like, I, yeah. it took me forever and I accidentally pushed it at some point when I was swimming around and I was like, what was that? And then I saw it fall down and I was like, oh, okay, okay I'll try that. Where did it come from? But then, yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, and there, it's not like a. If you think about Mario, they'll usually have like a dispenser, or it's like here's a uh, here's a clear pipe that this thing is coming from. In, in Echo, it's like if the block goes away and you need to use it, um, it actually just kind of like respawns after some time. <clears throat> now, here's a funny bit that I I again I forgot that you could use the gold or you could hit the gold chains with your nose. No. <laughs> so I find a, I find a chain. I'm like, okay, I need one of those little blocks, and I happen to found, find a block on the way other side of this level. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm, I, I moved it up to the top of level. I pushed it all the way to the right side. And now I'm trying to get the block um, up this hill, which is not oh, working oh, at all. You don't. And I almost get, I almost get it. But what's funny is I accidentally <laughs> in trying to get the block <laughs> totally. up the hill, I accidentally missed it on the dive and I actually hit the gold chain with my nose. I was like, Oh, of course I can just hit the, the gold chain with my nose there. So the, re- the reaction of Echo to that, like you controlling Echo, like said everything because you like stopped yeah. for a second and like, then you're like, what? 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 And then <laughs> you went and got air and then you were like, what the? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, I, th- that is some of the moments I really do like about Echo is the the process of discovery. And um, although sometimes it's, it's hard to figure out what you can do, um, as long as you're just kind of playing around with stuff and trying out new stuff, I feel like you're going to figure it out at some point, you know? Yeah. I did have to read the manual, though. Did you guys look up the manual at all? I didn't. I read oh, enough I of the manual just to uh, to figure out what the controls were, but I didn't, didn't look too yeah. much beyond that. That's kind of what I used it for. I'll tell you what I really liked about it, though, is um, it was definitely written by someone that likes dolphins. Or is fascinated in them because there's a bunch of like dolphin trivia. Oh, cool! And and I actually learned, uh, you know, like dolphins can only stay underwater for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and what's funny is a little bit later on in the game, you ta- you you um you can ping one of the crystals, and the crystals are like, "Hey, if dolphins can't breathe underwater, why do we live underwater?" I'm like, "That's a great <laughs> question." But um, yeah, I, I, I think it's cool. If, if people are interested in, in playing the game, I, I do recommend taking a look at the manual because it does give you instructions how to play the game and a little bit of lore, but also it gives you some cool little dolphin trivia and stuff I didn't really know about. And so I did appreciate the idea of kind of using this as a, as a vehicle almost to teach people more about dolphins, you know? Yeah. And and, and I, I think we see this a lot in those in retro games where we have like unique concepts that don't really make a lot of sense. You know, like you think about something like Toe Jam and Earl, Echo the <laughs> Dolphin. Um, uh, what was the other one I'm thinking? Earthworm Jim. It's like the, these are cool concepts and it really requires sort of a dedication to a unique mechanic or unique uh, uh, avatar to, to show the story. Now, Lobos, why don't you walk us through this section right here? Yep, there you go. You did it. We're, uh, on, the city, <laughs> we're on the city, uh, the city of forever. So. Yeah, it's another like uh, tall, like a uh, 
column of water that has kind of a high wall on the right side and yeah, there's a really not, really high wall yeah it's a high wall and there's you explore the rest of the level and you're like i don't i don't see anywhere else to go and maybe i could do that and so you try and try and sure enough you can uh, end up jumping over uh you know what's funny though is i don't actually think i did that and i don't know how because i remember reading the guide just to make sure right <laughs> and yeah. it talked about the jump that you just did this really long fall but I don't remember doing it, and oh, really? I don't know how I got past there that was part an, now. There was another way you could get to this area without having what? to do that. Wait, how? In the in the very first part of the level, where there's that gate that you pass on the right side, if you go up into the up into the right, there's a little cubby where you can see one of those statues off into the distance, uh, past past like areas of level you can't actually move. But if you mm -hmm. shoot your sonar and hit that statue, it'll open That's that what gate I did, yeah. and let you get oh, to this area. Oh, amazing! Yeah, I totally I, none did of the that. guides I none of the guides I saw even mentioned this. They were just like, "Hey, yeah, it takes me forty or fifty times, so <laughs> just ha have fun." I don't know. That's amazing, though. Okay, because you do have to go back through an area again. And when I went back through through there again, I was like, "Oh, come on!" Really? <laughs> but having oh man, that. I would have, wish I would have known that. Yeah, we did also, we skipped that other level that had the big central, where you had to jump over. And that, I feel like, I don't know if you guys, like, nailed the mechanics, but the best, for to get, like, a huge jump with Echo out of the water, the, the best I could find was just to circle around underwater and then yeah. basically clockwise circle and then come up if you're going to the right. And then as you hit, like, a diagonal upright you would just boost and you would somehow get more speed and, and mashing the the dash button it was it was a mess but so i was a little uh a little uh, misinformed on when the time travel sequence comes up we finally hit it so again we're in i guess it um the uh we're still city forever and we want to go back in time and so we hit this little glyph and it says time travel initiated traveler echo and then you get mm -hmm. up to the these like they look like um two little dishes facing each other. And so I'm like, all right, great. How do I time travel? Um, what do I do? And so I'm like going around and my, my breath is going out. My life is going out. I'm shooting the sonars all, all over. And then I finally just hit the side of one of the dishes with my sonar. And then those start to bounce back and forth. And then I do like this little swirly thing. Did you guys figure out how to time travel I right away? Yeah, not right away for myself anyways. It seemed to have a pretty specific hitbox in the middle of the dish. Yeah. So if you weren't perfectly centered, it like wouldn't it wouldn't register, but yeah, yeah, I found it off just mashing. Felt pretty trial and error. Yeah. And then you go back to time to the Jurassic Beach. And uh so we can talk a little bit about the this area because early on you find a glyph and the glyph says, like, shoot, uh, shoot the, or sing the song to summon the, like, pterodactyl or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not a pterodactyl. I think it's some other type of. Uh, the pteranodon. Yeah, pteranodon. Yeah, okay, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> is, is that a real thing? <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, I think so. And so I, uh, it's not entirely clear like what that means because when I went up to the surface, I was like, okay, I'm shooting it all in the air. Um, I see, I see a couple birds like way in the distance. So I'm like, <laughs> maybe those are like little tiny pixels. So I was like, what's going on here? By the way, around this area is these like really long eels, which are really kind of disgusting. They look like sharks, except for they're they look more like an eel. You know, like they're the length of a shark. And anyway, your, uh, and your confused sonar will work on them just like it will. A shark. Oh yeah, so you you uh, you finally find what I'm just gonna call it pterodactyl because honestly, it looks like one of those. <laughs> and so what you do is you jump into the air and you shoot your your song, your your homing or your sonar into the air, and it comes and picks you up. And this serves as a way to get to the next area, which you know, is kind of cool. You know, uh, I, I could appreciate it. And then you go down a little bit south of here, or you go down to the bottom of the ocean, and there's these little volcano things, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys figure out the trick with the volcanoes? 
on Eventually, an accident yes. when I was trying to run from one of these little <laughs> trilobites that's chasing you. Yeah, the trilobites are uh. nasty. They look like they look kind of more like shrimp to me. <laughs> uh, if I were to describe what they look like, they look like little shrimps. But yeah, they they get on you and they are adamant about killing you. And so yeah, I also accidentally ran into one of these volcanoes. And the uh, actually is the volcano on this level? No, it's on the next level, I believe. The Pteranodon Pond. So at the bottom of the the ocean here are a bunch of these volcanoes, and uh, unbeknownst to me, actually a couple of the volcanoes are false walls. So you can actually go into the volcano and then through the terrain, which allows you to progress a little bit more into the area. As far as I could tell, the only indication that that exists is it has some bubbles coming out. Uh, Lobos, how did you figure out that those volcanoes were where you needed to go? Yeah, I, I eventually, one of my tactics, if I didn't know where to go, was just to kind of <laughs> edge along the walls and mash my sonar and see if it hits something. And that's that's how I managed to find that. It, they have enemies that kind of come out from the walls, so after I figured that out, I was like, oh, maybe they have like, you know, an enemy come through that little tunnel area to show you, hey, you can go through here. But that wasn't the case. They just come out of <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. So uh, it was just luck. And then once I knew to look for that, then I was like, OK, well, we'll keep in the, keep that in mind. Whenever it came yeah. to like the long line of the uh, of the little heat vents on the bottom and only a couple of them you could go down, I was able to use the sonar and you could see the uh, you could see mm. like basically the pillars underneath them. But there, it would look like there was solid, solid earth between you and those pillars. But that was kind of your indication of if I go down this vent, I'll hit that pillar. Right, oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And uh, we are back to <laughs> the, the the pterodactyl. I, I like this guy a lot because he's when he picks him up, he's just he seems so happy to pick up Echo. He's he, and you'd think you know Echo would be a perfect bite size <laughs> uh, meal for this pterodactyl because pterodactyl is pretty big you know yeah uh it's probably like three times as large as echo <laughs> and he looks very hungry because he he's like squawk squawking as he's going he's picking up uh, echo and moving around oh, now uh, the next level is origin beach and uh i think that we're introduced to a new enemy which is it looks like a seashell but it has some tentacles coming out uh, and they actually have a shelled squid, a shelled <sighs> squid. Well, there's actually two types of enemies that have these. There's one that moves from side to side, uh, which we're seeing right now. And then there's one that look more like conch shells and they have, uh, tentacles coming out there. <laughs> uh, in either case, uh, both aren't too tricky to navigate. Again, if you just keep mashing on the dash button, Eventually, you're going to get through this, the area pretty quickly. Uh, and then we move on to the next level, which calls the Trilobite Circle. And when I saw the name of this level, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And immediately, there's like two or three Trilobites that are just on me. <laughs> and they, yeah, they actually do uh, just go through the walls to get Yeah, you, so. they chase you so much longer than any other enemy. Like anything else, you could just kind of run away from, and it's fine. Yeah. But They'll chase you, and if you're just trying to get away, you'll aggro another one, and then you'll have two or three chasing you. And if you try to turn around and bo boop them with your nose, most of the time they would just They're approach you too fast. To kill, so yeah. yeah. And yeah. then uh, one of the new, I think this is one of the last new enemies we'll see uh, in the ocean, at least, is this huge seahorse, which is blocking off a, a path. And I don't know if you can kill it. I never was able to. Oh, um, but. Yeah, oh, I can? did. I did, yeah. Ooh, okay. I managed to just kind of like skirt alongside the wall and get through <laughs> it. But nice. every time I hit it, it's shooting up like four little mini seahorses mm -hmm. from it. And so it was just like, oh, come on, just let me through. Uh, yeah, eventually I, I got through. And um, and I think uh, one of the saving graces for me there is anytime I found one of those, we were talking earlier about those those glyphs you could hit that would give you this invulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, those were great because you, you could just pass through the, the seahorse with those. Mm. And then at the end of the level, you actually jump into the sky, which I, I wasn't quite sure like how that works. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Cause they never had that as an exit before. And I, I don't know, maybe you get grabbed by a pteranodon and taken somewhere else, but 
Yeah, they, they don't really give you an exit, and you're like, what are you doing? What are we doing here? And I usually jump up just to check out like this, the walls on the sides, mm-hmm. and then it ended the level. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. It's worth noting that there's really no indication of where exits are in the game, and yeah. often, actually not often, but occasionally the exit will just be like through a wall. Yeah. Uh, and so, it, and, and you uh, just... You, I, I will say, if you use your sonar near an exit, you'll see arrows pointing, oh, really? uh, indicating oh, okay. that this is the okay. exit, and that's the direction that you want to be pointing. But the, exit, right, Jen, the exits let's... even had, uh, the exits even had, like, their own hitbox that you had to hit that box to hit the exit. Like, you couldn't just go to the yeah. very mm-hmm. edge oh, of it. Right, you had right. to swim yeah. back a little bit. Yeah. So we, we hit our first of two bosses in the game, the Asterite, um, raise of hands who had to look up how to defeat this boss i did me i i had i had the right idea and just uh-huh. looked it up to make sure that that's what you had to do because i didn't want to spend a bunch of time trying to do it so okay uh, why don't you walk us through what you have to do lobos and tell us how you figured out how you had to do this well like you said it was it's like a double helix of these orbs that just kind of spins around uh, twirls around itself and uh, it's it's made up of different colored orbs. There's like brown, orange, blue, and like gray or something like that. And it shoots lightning at you eventually, which deals a ton of damage. And if you run into it, it deals damage. And uh, the sonar doesn't seem to do anything to it that I, I notice. So if you charge it with your nose and boop it, whatever you hit, whichever orb you hit will start flashing. It will be like flashing transparent. And... It stays that way. And if you hit another orb, maybe it'll stay on or maybe it'll turn off. And I, I noticed that if you hit two of the same color, then they'll both remain flashing. So I was like, okay, all right, I'll keep so hitting the, the ones guy, of the same The color. guy that I saw had said it had to be a specific color. Maybe oh. that's not the case. No, I, t- I had, was doing it with different ones depending on okay. my attempt. Okay, because the, the guy that I said said you had to hit the same color as Echo's nose. I was like, okay, what, gray, I guess? But that's interesting. So that maybe that's a little bit easier than I thought it was because I was like, how were you supposed to know it was just the gray orb? Oh. <laughs> interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, but, after- but after you, I think after you get four of those orbs, then yeah, if you just kind of, yeah, in a row without hitting other ones because that interrupts <laughs> it. Then he the the big double helix thing just kind of yeah. crumbles down. Good, good you time get the orb. to use save states, right? The, all oh, right yeah. Hit the first orb, save state. Yep. Second yep. orb, save state. Yep. After that, you go back to Asterite, and he's like, hey, great. Thank you for making me whole again. Um, and he teleports you back to before the vortex suck up your pod. And yep. he's like, hey. Um, oh, also, he gives you a special power. You no longer have to surface for air so you're basically you can breathe underwater did you guys notice that ah uh, i knew that yeah. happened but i didn't know that's why it happened yeah it's you nice. that and your health it, regenerates automatically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh yeah 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 and those are those are great great things because uh you're gonna need it in the next <laughs> le- next couple levels here so we're coming up on the end of the game but yeah you go back in time and you jump up in the air again and the vortex comes and sucks up everyone but you get sucked up this time and enter the tube. This is a very different level than what we've seen in the past. We're now like in space and imagine a huge, um, you know, like shop vac vacuum sucking up the ocean. And that's what you're trying to traverse up right now. And, and it's a big it's, auto scroller level, which yes. they, I don't think they did auto scrollers up to this point, nope. but it's in game and it's going to be hard. So I think yeah. all the rest of the levels are auto scrollers. It is pretty hard. And again, I use save states a little bit here. I wanted to use, get the challenge of kind of learning the auto scroller level because I think that's where part of this the fun comes in. But at the same time, I'm like, the auto scroller level is actually kind of long. So I don't want to spend so long. So, yeah. This first one, like, yeah, it keeps increasing in speed how fast the level scrolls by. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of repeating sort of a pattern. Um, but pretty much what you did there, I was just slightly off center and I stood in one spot and just mashed my sonar. And if you got hit, you would regen health enough in time and then you would make it through. And I was actually running into, because there's there's these little lightning things on the wall and I was like trying to run into them because I didn't, I'm like, is there something I need to do to progress the level? <laughs> do I need to like damage this thing? Because I was sitting in the middle and nothing was touching me, but I didn't feel like it was progressing. So uh, after you actually 
complete that, you go into the uh, penultimate level here, which is called Welcome to the Machine. <laughs> this is another thing that I use save states a little bit, but I wanted to kind of memorize the levels because this actually was probably the most fun I had in the game. I don't know what you guys thought. Oh, nice. This was a really fun level. I had a lot of fun with it. I, I, I have a thing for auto-scrolling levels. I've always liked them. <laughs> But you're essentially inside of the alien mothership, and I guess it's all underwater, or maybe you're floating through space. I'm not yeah, sure. <laughs> at this point, I don't know. And, and there's these aliens that come out, and I, I would say they actually look like aliens from the movie Alien. Did you guys? Yeah, they got the, they got yeah. the big heads, and then yeah. they got I don't know, like just like kind of limbs. tentacles on them. Yeah, yeah, tentacles or limbs. Yeah. And so they come out, and once I figured out that you can use your sonar to blow them up. You basically just do 360s around the, as the level is auto scrolling, you just do like 360s blasting sonars all around. <laughs> uh, and it, this auto scroller level is pretty easy. Occasionally, though, what it will do is it will put, <laughs> it'll put you at a dead end. So let, let's say it's going to the up and, and the left, and it gets you in the dead end, and then it'll be like, okay, it stops, and now it starts going to the right. So there's often where it's like, all right, a path that you couldn't get to before now opens up. But I'll tell you what is devious. After you do that, you go to the boss level. Uh, it's not sorry, not boss level. You go to the boss because if you die on the boss, you have to do that whole welcome to the machine level again. And yeah. I was not going to do that because that, that that took about what five minutes? Would you say it is a long? It is long. long. Level. It's very but long. I, I would say that this level is where the difficulty of Echo actually just I would say not only shines but goes from about five to eleven. Now, let's talk a little bit about this boss fight and what it looks like. Alamaxia, why don't, you, why don't you fill us in here? So this is just a giant floating head, and uh, we have a lot going on. Around the room, uh, we have a whole bunch of holes in the wall, and there's going to be some toxic smoke that pops out of the, the walls and just try, tries to hit Echo. You can pretty dodge that pretty easily. Early in the level, there's going to be some more of those aliens spawning, but the biggest thing is that this big ass head has two eyes. Sorry, this big head has two eyes. And you need to uh, shoot your sonar at the eyes in order to pop them out of its head. But every time you hit it, a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of little black balls come out that you have to try to dodge and they do a lot of damage. Which normally you would think, "Oh, I can regen health." Well, regen is turned off for this boss fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> conveniently. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> now, I I did find that you could kind of stay off screen. And, and actually plink the eyes with the carefully placed sonar. So I, I was able to do that. Okay. But even and sitting once you get still the eyes too down, long in that, in that part, you would have those aliens creeping up on you. So you yeah. couldn't yeah. sit it still. But after you got those eyes down, you went after its jaw, which it would, it would constantly try to suck you up and you'd feel these jellyfish in the room go get sucked in. And you just had to time a dash just right to hit it in the jaw a whole bunch of times. And I think it was after you knocked the jaw off twice, then you could do the... Uh, then you actually damage the head itself. Yeah, by, by two more hits loops. the head, and he blows up. And and actually, what you see is is all the sea life kind of spiral out from this alien head, and all the dolphins kind of come out, and they they go back down the tube that you just came in, and it's really cool because you see your um your your school, I guess, of dolphin friends, and. And you just kind of like you go into the sea and you're jumping around and all the the dolphins are are uh, swimming and they're happy and your your character Echo he goes into a mode where he actually just goes and talks to everyone and at this point you don't have control it's sort of a cutscene and uh, you're basically talking to all your your family that you saved and they're they're saying hey great job Echo we're gonna remember you for you ever or we're going to remember you forever. You're a hero. You saved us. Good job. So um, I guess not a whole lot of fanfare, but I did feel like that boss fight was a lot of fun. Uh, I I'll tell you what, though. If the boss fight was a separate level and it's like every time you die, you restart the boss fight, I would have felt that that boss fight was perfectly balanced. You know, it was it was a lot of fun, a little bit of a challenge, not too bad, but, you know, had a little bit of skill and it had some cool mechanics to it. Yeah, I, I liked it overall. The, the only problem I had was that if he sucks you up, that was one hit. And yeah, one if hit if one of those uh, individual smaller aliens kind of got on top of you, you, you were pretty much one hit. So, <laughs> And without the regening health, it's like, ah. Uh, if they, com considering they combined it with the level, they could have at least left that regen because you regen, yeah. but if you get 
in a bad situation, you'll still uh, you'll still get taken out. But what's really well, funny everyone, is that... um, really funny is just before we end it, a little factoid about just that difficulty is that um, the developer of the game put out a little factoid in uh, 2012 that said uh, I was paranoid about game rentals and kids beating the game over the weekend, so I uh, made it hard. So a little background about why it might be hard. He just just wanted to make sure that kids didn't beat it right away. Yeah, and definitely took me some time, even with save states. So yeah, Uh, I I guess uh, to kind of close out my feelings here, I again, I I did have some enjoyment with the game. I don't think I'd be interested in doing uh, the sequels of Echo, although I, I, I really appreciate what it tried to do and what it did. And, and I'm glad that I played it. Do you guys have any closing thoughts on Echo the Dolphin? Um, I'll say it's a really good thing that the city of Atlantis uh, designed everything for a dolphin in order to save the world. Because that's... <laughs> unless it was a city of dolphins. I don't know. Well, remember, it was a, it was a city... Uh, it was like 55 million years ago it was constructed. Uh, I, I think in the lore, court. I think the lore, whenever you're hitting the crystals, they even say that it was foretold they say it's made that, for dolphin. That, that like it was, right. it was, like, they kind of predicted it was going to be a dolphin. Yeah, or, or I guess they knew like. stuff that, that nobody else did, or they just knew ahead of time. So <laughs> they looked into the future. Now, um, I'd be interested. Also, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say on the closing note, um, maybe not play Echo 2, but check out that soundtrack, man. Echo 2. Oh, I will do that. I'll that's a real good that. soundtrack. Yeah, now, I was gonna All say right, I'd be everyone, interested to see how oh, oh. you would like the game if you were to play through it. Um, if using the uh, the dash and the sonar because I use that a mm. lot through the whole game, and that's how I was able to kill the trilobites, the the spider crabs, and everything. I instead of hitting them with my nose, I was hitting them with sonar, and that made a lot of the game significantly easier. So I feel like just by going through it only hitting it with your nose, that was a challenge mode in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and one more little bit about uh, power-ups. We didn't mention it. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I think it's the very first pod that you save. If you save all three, you get that sonar confuse upgrade, but you also get something to where enemies don't respawn anymore if you kill them. Oh, so yeah. you can complete Ooh. you can completely empty out a level and not have uh, to worry about that. I did not get that because, yeah, the enemies would repopulate if I left the area and came back. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks, folks, for uh, for listening. That's going to wrap up our uh, Echo the Dolphin episode. And, of course, we really wanted to thank our Patreon supporters for supporting this episode. If you like what you uh, hear here and you want to help support us, please head on over to patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Gaming Show to learn more. Uh, we have some cool things there, including uh, early access to the podcast. And also one of the things we do is we splice together the video, the actual video that the group here watches with the podcast. So you can actually follow along with us to uh, visualize, better visualize what we're seeing. So I think that really helps change the experience there. So, yeah, um, we finished Echo, and um, I'm pretty bananas about this podcast. What are we going to play next? <laughs> pretty mm. bananas? Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Can we take do another take on that one, Alamaxia? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's that's perfect, man. So here's one that actually, Alamaxia, I think you, you kind of suggested, and I have never played uh, this one. Uh, Lobos, how about you? Have you played it? I've definitely played it. Uh, I think I've beaten it, but it was a very long time ago. Awesome. We're going to be playing Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. And it's been a little bit a hot moment since we played a platformer. I think the last one we did was um, Yoshi's Island, right, Ooh. Lobos? Yes, definitely. And so I'm hoping that this one is a is a fun game um, uh, to experience there. I looked at a little bit of the, the videos, and it seems kind of interesting, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're going to definitely do that in May. I but sadly, we have it. reached the end credits of this episode, and we all wanted to thank you for listening to us on the podcast. And we do re- release a new podcast monthly, so be sure to follow and subscribe to the podcast on the iTunes, Google, or whatever your choice your platform is. If you got feedback or just want to send us a message, we'd love to hear for you from you. Uh, message us at Saturday Morning Gaming Show at gmail.com. 
or follow us on Twitter at Saturday M Gaming. Yeah, and we definitely have the uh, Game of the Year podcasts uh, available. Actually, the uh, the last the day three is going to be coming out soon. And so after listening to those, that will be a perfect opportunity for you to, to shoot us an email saying, you guys were completely wrong about these mm. top 10 games, and this is why. And here's my top 10 list. I, we certainly would love to hear if you have your top 10 list of uh, 1999. Uh, but we did want to give a special shout out to Technoax for a lot of the music on this episode. For Saturday Morning Gaming, I'm Alamaxia. And I'm Lobos. And I'm the Fat Wizard. We'll see you in May with Donkey Kong Country. We'll see you in May with Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo.